Hey there, Burned In Teacher. Welcome to episode 131 of the Burned In Teacher podcast. This episode is a really good one, and it's different than anything I've ever done before. A couple of months ago, Ramsey Solutions reached out to me and asked if they could come on and talk about ways that teachers can achieve, and get this, can achieve millionaire status. You're going to be really really surprised by some of the things that my guest, Christina Ellis, shares with us today. And she's going to tell you how, how it is that teachers are actually in the top five uh, professions that can retire in millionaire status. Now, don't don't shut this off quite yet. Give it a chance. It's a short episode. It's a great action-based episode. And Christina really lays out a lot of simple things and baby steps that we can take to set ourselves up for wealth and financial freedom. Yes, us, teachers and principals, we, we can do the work that, that needs to be done in order to set ourselves up for financial success. Let me first of all introduce our guest today. I am going to be talking here in just a few minutes with Christina Ellis. She is a best-selling author who believes no student should be burdened by student loans. She's helped thousands of students earn a debt-free education by sharing practical wisdom from her personal experience of earning over $500,000 in college scholarships. You can follow Christina on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and we will have all of those handles in our show notes. So you're going to hear me share a little bit about my husband and I, who is an elementary school principal and myself as a kindergarten teacher, um, how it is that we have applied Dave Ramsey's baby steps to our lives starting back in 2007. So that's why I really felt strongly about doing this interview because I know that it is so applicable and it can make a huge difference in the way that you manage your money and set yourself up for financial success. And it's going to take work. As you know, everything burned in teacher related takes a little work. It takes thinking and doing differently. And that is why I'm so excited to share this episode with you. One more thing, April is Financial Literacy Month. And that's another reason that this episode is perfect. And in honor of Financial Literacy Month, Christina is going to be sharing some information that you can use to enter a giveaway for $5,000 just for being a teacher. So make sure that you stay tuned. Let's dive in. Hey there, I'm Amber Harper, former burned out teacher turned teacher burnout coach, dedicated to helping other teachers like you to grow through your burnout and take your next best steps toward what you want from your career in education and in life. After an embarrassing emotional breakdown in front of my teacher besties, I knew something needed to change and that something was me. I decided that I wasn't going to settle for burnout as my sentence, as a teacher, mom, wife, or friend. And I knew it was going to take way more than practicing conventional self-care to make the progress I wanted to make. No amount of manicures, bottles of wine, or bubble baths was going to save this girl. Fast forward a few years later, and I've used everything I've learned about teacher burnout and personal development to write a book, build a course, and lead a community of burned-in teachers who refuse to settle for a life of burnout as their forever reality. I've used my burnout as an opportunity to become an active participant in my life, in the classroom and here on the mic, using all that I've learned to teach kids and serve teachers. And you can do the same. The Burned In Teacher podcast is one part burnout and all other parts action, inspiration, and support to help you grow through your burnout and live a happier, more fulfilled career and life. So take a deep breath, my friend, because you're about to take your next best step to becoming a Burned In Teacher. Now let's get started. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. If you need someone in your life who can help to push you through challenging situations, heal from past trauma, or help you change your mindset and perspective, BetterHelp can assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist in less than 48 hours. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm a full-time teacher and a teacher burnout coach, not a licensed therapist. Sometimes your needs are deeper than what I can offer you as someone who is using their experience and success with beating burnout to support other teachers. And that's okay. BetterHelp is professional therapy done securely online. 
available for everyone worldwide with weekly video or phone sessions, and timely and thoughtful text-based check-ins and responses from your therapist all throughout the week if that's something you need. BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional online therapy, and financial aid is available. Go to www.betterhelp.com slash burnedinteacher to sign up and check out all of the testimonials. And if you sign up, you get 10% off your first month by using my link. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash burnedinteacher. You'll get 10% off your first month with our promo code burnedinteacher. That's all one word. Burn on. Christina, thank you so much for joining us today on the Burned In Teacher Podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. So when uh, when Ramsey Solutions reached out to me, I was immediately kind of starstruck and really excited because my husband and I, as you know, are both educators. And we started following Dave Ramsey back in, gosh, it would have been 2007. And because of reading his book, we did not attend financial peace, but because of reading his book, we got ourselves out of student loan debt and paid off our cars and have used a lot of those budgeting practices that we learned about in his book, um, to keep ourselves in a really healthy financial place. And so I'm really excited for you to share some of the knowledge that you have, um, with the listeners today, you know, teacher pay and the lack of, you know, the lack of funding that education gets and, um, the lack of giant paychecks <laughs> that are handed out to teachers is a big issue and, and really can, um, can add to a, a situation where a teacher may be burned out. You know, it's not like we're getting paid a lot of money to stay in these positions. So I am really excited for the message that you have today, but tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, absolutely. I grew up in a very naturally frugal household. My mom, she's an immigrant from Venezuela, and she grew up with basically nothing. So when she came here, she was naturally very tight with money. Mm -hmm. And my freshman year of high school, she basically sat me down and said, Christina, I love you and I believe in you, but you're going to be on your own paying for college. And I was kind of shocked at first, but at the same time, I knew that she was just trying to help. My dad, he passed away after a long and painful battle with brain cancer when I was seven. And my mom, she tried to do the best she could to support me and my brother, but we still struggled financially. Mm -hmm. So she was really trying to just encourage me that day to be real about what was ahead of my future. She wanted me to do something great. She didn't want me to struggle with money my entire life. So she was just trying to light a fire in me to go th for things myself. And she did. I ended up researching scholarships and just trying to figure out what does it take to stand out and win in the process and how could I how could I set myself up for success. So I implemented that all throughout high school, ended up winning over a half a million dollars in scholarships and was able to go to college completely debt free, which I'm so thankful for. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And from that, um, I just really became passionate about money and finance and what sets people up for success, what doesn't. I ended up writing two books on college finance, helping students figure out how to graduate debt-free. And then I've spent the last 10 years touring the country and talking with families and students and people from all walks of life about their money and how to win with money. And so that's, you know, where I am today. I here, I'm here at Ramsey and it's just been so fun getting to work with this team and see lives change. It's mm -hmm. awesome. I love that you started with the book. It's like we, we see people from all sorts of different walks of lives and different places find us. And it's just super exciting to see people go from you know, potentially being in debt to becoming, you know, baby step millionaires. It's mm. just been really fun. Yeah. So I thank you so much for sharing that with us. And I am, I love it whenever people's personal journeys end up being a, a, even a small part or a large part of their profession. I think that that, you know, being able to empathize with the people that you're working with is so, so important. So I'm so, I'm so excited to hear that, that you, my, Gosh, half a million dollars in scholarships. That's really impressive. Thank you. Thank you. It was, it was definitely a blessing. I'm very thankful. And it's crazy. I hear so many people say, you know, I wish that somebody would have told me when I was in high school that there were, you know, these resources available. You know, I have so many people I work with that, that are in student loan debt. And I'm like, use that debt, use your journey to light a fire in students mm -hmm. who 
are potentially going to go on that path of student loans and that toxic culture. You know, use mm -hmm. that as motivation to help other people um, in addition to fighting for your own debt-free um, success. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking of scholarships, you know, one reason that you all reached out to me is because now this is not a scholarship, but you are celebrating um, national national financial literacy month in the month of April. So this episode will air at the very beginning of April. So tell us a little bit about how you are celebrating teachers and, and what it is that you're doing to, uh, to, you know, maybe throw a little money their way potentially. Yeah, we're so excited. We're doing our teacher appreciation giveaway. You know, we've worked with a lot of teachers here at Ramsey. We have Ramsey Education that has the foundation's curriculum that goes out to high school students. So we are constantly in interaction with teachers. And we know that it's hard, that teacher burnout is real and that teachers have had so much pressure over the last two years. So um, we're just really excited to do this giveaway. We're giving away two $5,000 cash prizes along with, three $1,000 prizes. So we're giving away quite a bit of cash, which we are excited about. Yeah. Well, thank you. We really appreciate it. And this is right, right before, um, well, it depends on the district, but a lot of teacher appreciation weeks are coming up, you know, in the spring. So this is very well aligned, um, with that That's as well. Awesome. So can you tell teachers, first of all, how it is that they can enter, uh, for these giveaways? Yeah. Go to Christina Ellis.com slash teacher. And it is open through April 30th. So if you are a teacher, if you know a teacher, if you love a teacher, share this information. It's Christina with a K, ChristinaEllis.com slash teacher. Awesome. And we will have that link in the show notes. But that's not the only reason that we had you come on here today. We've got a couple of really important talking points. And Christina, I'm just going to kind of let you take it from here. You know, one thing that we chatted about back and forth via email was um, how teachers can become more financially literate and sort of a mind blowing statistic about teacher retirees. So can you kind of go into those two talking points a little bit? Yes, we did a national study of millionaires and it's super exciting and cool what we found. We actually found that teachers were in the top five professions for millionaires, which that seems to shock a lot of people. I mean, we surveyed 10,000 people and that came up across the board. Um, it's, it's pretty cool that only 31% of those surveyed ever um, really earned over $100,000 a year and one third never even made six figures at any point. So it's really neat to see that it's not just about your income. It's not about how much you make, but it's how you invest and how you approach money. Um, there's definitely this thought that a lot of people think if I don't have a big income, I can never be financially successful. And that's just not the truth. You know, we've seen so many people achieve success through this. So we're excited to spread this information because it just, I think it brings a lot of light to what the possibilities are. Mm. And it's really cool. If you're looking for a resource to really, you know, dive into more success stories, um, Dave Ramsey, or my boss, just put out a book, Baby Step Millionaires, and it's people who've been through our program and been through financial peace um, and have had a lot of success. So I just, I hope that's an encouragement to listeners that it's like, it doesn't matter, you know, if your salary isn't six figures or super high, like you can be successful in this process. So um, another one of the talking points that we talked about was getting into financial peace, which is the foundation of what we do here, financial peace. Peace University. Um, you can go to RamseyPlus.com and it's, you know, it's this nine lesson course that teaches you what you need to know about money to have a strong foundation. So it walks you through the baby steps. Um, if you're not familiar with the baby steps, we have seven baby steps here at Ramsey. The first one is to start a $1,000 starter emergency fund. Baby step two is if you are in debt, to tackle that debt. We want debt completely out of your life. We don't want it to be suffocating you anymore. We want that gone. And so we use the debt snowball in this step. So you take your debts, you line them up from smallest to largest, and you attack the smallest one first. So go after that with a vengeance, put all the extra money you can into that smallest debt while still paying the minimum on the other debts. And then once you've paid off that smallest debt, you roll it into the next debt. And you attack the next smallest debt, but you take that money you were putting on the smallest debt and put it on the next one. So pay that off with a vengeance and then knock that one out and then go on to the next one. And you can see how momentum 
starts to form as that snowball, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, and some people look at that and they say, oh, but maybe I should start with the highest interest rate. Maybe I should do this other mathematical thing. But the truth is, is that money is 80% behavior and 20% head knowledge. So it's really about changing the behavior with money and getting you excited about those small wins in the process. You got to have that motivation. And we found that most people who do the baby steps, they knock out baby step two in 18 to 24 months. So if and we can attest, we can attest to that. That's exactly what Jeff and I did. And like I said, um, and for all you listeners out there, you know, I'm a kindergarten teacher. My husband is an elementary school principal. And also you may know, or maybe you don't know that we actually, we had a baby before we even went to college and we, we went to college and paid for our, our own way. So we, we left college with a lot of res- personal responsibility and student loan debt. And that's exactly how we paid ours off. We did the debt snowball and it changed our lives. And I, we were both really shocked at how quickly we did pay those loans off. That is so awesome. Mm -hmm. We hear that all the time. And I think that's such an encouragement because I think a lot of people think, no, my story, I have too much debt. This is not possible. I can't be free. Everybody has debt. I just have to live with this. And that's just not true. Well, and what you just said here, I, you all can't see me, but I'm like shaking my head. Yes. So hard because that's what burned in teacher is all about. It's about setting your highest priorities and doing the hard work that has to be done and taking the hard actions that you have to take in order to live what you consider to be a happy and fulfilled life and living a life in debt for me does not sound incredible. That does not sound like a life best lived. And I know that, and I know Christina knows this too, that we don't know your specific story. We don't know your specific journey. We don't know your specific, specific debt journey as well, but I, we can both attest to the fact that this really does work and it really will help you to take control over your finances and your financial future. Absolutely. Well, and the thing is right now, especially with this episode and its timing is we have the moratorium coming up to an end. And a lot of people are feeling the pressure of the student loan debt crisis. Um, I mean, by the time this airs, you know, they may have pushed the can down the road even further, but a lot of people have student loan debt and they're thinking, you know, this is something I'm going to have to have for the next 10 or 20 years. Um, There actually was a study that came or a survey that came out recently that said that 93% of borrowers are not prepared for student loan payments to resume. And 27% of people think that they can never start their student loan payments again. Mm -hmm. So there are people that are feeling so much stress and anxiety about student loan payments. And I know a lot of teachers are feeling that too. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of the people really had to invest in their education and now they have this huge debt. So if you are somebody who has student loan debt, I especially encourage you to get in the baby steps. You know, even if the moratorium does get extended and there's more time, like tackle it now where you're not, when you're not accruing interest, because this does not have to be something that you carry around forever that you have to feel stressed out about. Like we see people tackle their student loans and pay them off all the time. So Mm -hmm. why can't it be you? It can be you. Absolutely. Well, and, and what you're saying too, is really interesting to me because I can kind of apply it to the idea of paying yourself, like giving yourself a car payment. So even though, you know, we've got this moratorium where you were, you know, your student loans were kind of put on hold for however long, that doesn't mean that you can't be setting that money aside you know, even a small amount, setting, setting some money aside for whenever you do pick up those student loan payments again, you may be even able to pay a bigger chunk, um, you know, getting started with paying those payments again. Um, we do that with our cars. We, we don't have car payments anymore. And I don't really ever think that we did because we've always bought older cars. (laughs) We've never been people that drive around brand new cars. No, no hate to those who do, but Uh, we pay ourselves a car payment every single month. And every time, you know, whenever I had my accident in December, um, my car, my car was totaled by somebody else. And uh, we had money set aside so that we could get um, close to what my, my car was that was, that was taken away from us. So, and that was because we planned ahead. We paid ourselves first Um, and we do not live a lavish lifestyle. You know, we, we keep things very simple, but it's because we've created these habits. Like you said, the behaviors of people who are 
investing in their future and being smart with money. And my husband is definitely the geek. I'm going to be real honest with y'all. He is the geek and I am the free spirit. <laughs> he would totally <laughs> attest to that. Um, but just creating those healthy, have those healthy financial habits is really important. Yeah. It's super important. I love your story. I love how you've had that discipline and <laughs> just a true testament to how the baby steps work. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just really exciting. So, okay. Everybody, they go through baby step two, they tackle their debt, they're debt free. And then they move on to baby step three, which is to save your emergency fund of three to six months. And then from there, once you have that emergency fund fully funded, because here's the thing, we don't want to go back in debt. And um, Murphy's law is like, right. you know, what can go wrong will, especially when you don't have that extra provision and that preparedness to cover anything. So we want you to have that extra money so that you never go back. And that's the thing is like, getting out of debt, that's, that's important, but you also never want to go back. We're changing behaviors. We're changing behaviors for the long term. Mm. So once you're through baby step three, we're in four through six. Um, baby step four is saving 15% for retirement. Baby step five is saving for your kid's college. If you have a kid, if that's part of your life, you want to save for their college fund. And baby step six is going to sound ambitious for a lot of people. Um, it's it's kind of weird here at Ramsey. We say like embrace the weird. We're we're weird. We don't do what's normal in society, but we want people to pay off their houses so that they don't have a mortgage and they can live completely debt free, truly debt free for the rest of their lives. And once you're done with baby step six and you have a paid off house, then you're in the final baby step, baby step seven, which is where you build wealth and give. And that's just a super exciting place to be. That's how you do reach that millionaire status. A lot of people come to Ramsey or they think of Ramsey as the debt people, but really we're about building wealth. And we've seen so many people come through this program and become wealthy. So it's like you get out of debt so that you can build wealth, so that you have financial freedom, so that you can live that really great life. And that's, you know, that's such a deep passion of ours. Oh, for sure. And, and ours too. Um, you know, one thing that we believe in so much is, is modeling these, these healthy money habits for our kids too. And I can say like, as you're list, as you're listing the baby steps, we are in baby step number six. Um, we certainly don't, That's we awesome. aren't close to paying the house off, but it is something that consistently is coming up in conversation and that we are throwing extra money um, toward our mortgage because we would love to become mortgage free, you know, but that has taken a lot of time. I mean, we started this journey back in 2007, so it's, it's been a long time coming. Th these changes don't happen immediately. And I think that's the really hard part. And that's where you said we, we embrace the weird because we are doing things. And what you're suggest suggesting is that teachers do things differently than what has become quote unquote normal. Um, as far as, you know, the way we spend or, or, you know, in, invest our money. Right. And, and the thing is, is it feels like a long journey. Mm -hmm. Um, but in reality, you know, a lot of people are at baby step, step seven in seven to 10 years. So while it may be challenging in the process and feel like a long time, like then you have the rest of your life debt free. Like we get callers on the radio show that are calling at 60 or 70 years old and they have nothing saved for retirement. They're, they still have a big mortgage and they're super stressed out. And it's like, you know, you can follow these baby steps and, and have no debt you know, early on in your life and be set up for the rest of your life, which is so awesome. You know, we talk a lot about like kind of the tortoise in the hair. It's like, it's not necessarily like the get rich quick or, you know, yes. effort free process. But when you really zoom out and look at the whole picture, it's like, wow, you still can have so much life ahead of you walking in that freedom. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I've heard it said before, you know, and, and I truly believe this too, you know, building self-awareness is a huge part of what burn and teacher stands for. And, you know, I, there is a lot of negativity on social media about, um, you know, teacher burnout and how awful teaching is and how little we get paid. And I just love that you're really focusing in on the things that you can control which are how you spend your money. And we even, you know, came to a place while we were really doing this 
debt snowball. We really were questioning, you know, how much of a house we wanted. So we aren't paying a huge mortgage payment. You know, there are things that, that people have done that I've heard, for, especially after going through um, financial peace, that they've sold their houses and moved to a different neighborhood. They have sold, you know, they've traded in their cars or so for something that's not as um, pricey, you know, there are, you know, we can complain and complain and complain about all of the bills that we have and how little money that we make. But if we really look and build some self-awareness around where we are spending our money and really questioning ourselves, do I have to have this brand new car? Do I have, do I have to live here or can we, you know, can we be a little bit smarter, work smarter, not harder when it comes to kind of eliminating some of those, those ways that we're spending our money? Absolutely. Yeah. That's why it's so great. And we encourage people to get on a zero based budget, you know, as soon as possible, because a lot of people like they hear budget and they think, Oh, I kind of know where my money's going. I spend this much on housing or like, ah, and they like kind of have it in their head, or maybe they like write it down on a piece of paper, but like, we want people to get on a detailed zero based budget. Cause when you really break down where your money's going, um, you can often find a lot of spots where you're like, Oh, wow, wait, I, I, I don't, I was spending money on that. And it's like, when you really work through it it's like wow a lot of people feel like they get a raise because it's like they actually know where their money is and where it's going versus wondering where it went so yeah. it's just yeah. important to like write that down and be on top of it because that can help so much it does yeah and, and that is one thing so if you want to tell us a little bit more about the budgeting that is something that we brought into our lives that we had never done before um, and that was a huge game changer to be able to see exactly how much money are we spending on groceries every month how much money are we spending on fuel how much money are we spending on clothing um i hope jeff isn't listening to that part of this because that's <laughs> it <laughs> but but we're able to pinpoint exactly how much we're spending on each on each um category every single month do you have any right. specific yeah, we tips have, for that? Yeah, we have a really great budgeting tool called Every Dollar, and it's available with the Ramsey Plus membership. So um, if you go to ramseyplus.com, you can get a free trial and kind of browse around and see if there's tools that you like and things that you find um, that are useful. But it's nice because it syncs with your bank and it can kind of make that process easier. Um, but take the time to do it. I think a lot of people try it and they get overwhelmed, but I just want to encourage people that everybody gets overwhelmed, I guess, unless you're like super money nerd, mm -hmm. um, then maybe, maybe your husband is on that Probably level of Jeff, like, yeah, for sure. <laughs> not getting overwhelmed. <laughs> Most of us get overwhelmed. Like the first time you sit down with the budget. So like, if that's you, like it is okay, like embrace it. We often encourage people to give it at least three months, like embrace the uncomfortable for three months, because mm -hmm. it's going to take time to figure things out. And you're going to go over budget in one category one month and under in another, and you'll learn how to like shift things around and find the right system for you. But you really just have to stick with it, even if it's like, oh, this feels messy at first, like you will get there. Yes. So, so listeners, you've heard me say this before. I'm going to say it again. You're not going to get different results unless you do things differently. And this is so different for some of us out there and that's okay. And it is hard and it is scary, but unless you're trying and doing different things, you will not get different results. And this applies to your burnout. It, it applies to your finances. It applies to everything, um, even outside of teaching. So, um, I'm so glad that you shared that with us. Yeah, of course. And I love what you said earlier about like, what you can control. We talk a lot about the controllables here and like mm -hmm. focusing in and leaning in on that. Like what can you control? Like we've seen so many stories of crazy situations where people have taken control of what they can control, even if it's like a tiny little sliver of something, mm -hmm. like just find those things, find those little steps where you can start and start making progress and start seeing progress because little progress at first can yield really big results in the long run. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell us about, you know, how teachers can become more financial, financially literate before we move on? Yeah, we have a really great program called Foundations and Personal Finance for high school students. So it's mm -hmm. our high school curriculum on personal finance. I've been able to work with the team that's built that quite a bit recently, and it is truly incredible. Um, it's, it's, I've talked to so many adults and friends that are, you know, now millennials, you know, in their careers. And the thing I always hear is I wish I would have learned this stuff in high school. I wish I would have learned how to budget. I wish I would have learned to avoid debt and all of this, like all of these things about money. Like, why weren't we taught this sooner? And like, this is the answer to that. This is the solution. Mm -hmm. But what's been really cool about going through this curriculum personally and 
studying it is I'm like, wow, like I'm learning stuff as an adult. <laughs> I'm like, wow, this it's, we talk about banking and taxes and details and nuances within that. So I would just encourage teachers if they're looking for something for their students, in addition to themselves, it's a great curriculum to go through. They would probably learn a lot as they go through the process as well, because it's just very extensive and lays such a strong foundation. So is this a program that is available for teachers to use in their classrooms, or is this just for, you know, teachers with their own biological children? No, it's for the classroom. It's Ramsey Education. Wow. Um, Okay. Yeah, it's for the classroom. There's an actual curriculum where it's laid out lessons, lesson plans. There's activities for the students to do each week. And there's also a video video curriculum available um, where the teachers can walk it through online, where they actually teach lessons to the students. Um, and then the teachers can just walk through the different activities with the students. It's, it's pretty amazing. I've been that very is- impressed as I've worked through it. Mm-hmm. So what is the, uh, what's the, the link there? Um, I believe it's RamseyEducation.com. Okay. And um, yeah, you can find out all the information and advocate for your district to adopt it because it's just, it's such a cool program. I have been personally thrilled and impressed to work with it because I'm like, wow, this mm. is that thing that we all wished we had when we were younger. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I know I've heard people say that before too, you know, in high school, we learn all of, you know, we have all these classes that aren't really applicable, but that is definitely something that is 100% can change a kid's life. Right. Yeah. It's been really cool. We actually had a student in the lobby the other day come in and do their debt-free scream. So we have the radio show here. We are on for three hours a day, every day. So um, you can listen to the Ramsey show and each hour of the radio show, we have people come in and do their debt-free scream. So mm-hmm. um, it's really exciting and encouraging for you know all those people who are listening right now who are on baby step two, if you need to have that inspiration, listen to the radio show, and listen to these debt-free screams because it's people who've walked out baby step two and they've had success in the process. But we had a 21 and a 22 year old come in the other day and they paid off $75,000 in debt and they were doing their debt-free scream. I was wow. so impressed, but they took foundations in high school and it's like they had that foundation of personal finance. They knew what to do and they were ready to attack it. And now they're working on paying off their house. And I'm like, oh, God, give so you goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, so I'm looking here at some of the um, the findings that you have on your national study of millionaires, because I'd love to talk a little bit more about how teachers fit into this list. I just think it's so amazing. So you said that the top five careers among millionaires are engineer, accountant or CPA, teacher, management, and attorney. I just think that it's so incredible that a teacher is there with engineers and attorneys, because I think sometimes our narrative in our heads is, oh, we're like lower rung. We're just teachers. And I, of course, do not subscribe to that narrative. Um, But I think that this really proves it, that we have the potential, if we make the right moves, to really put ourselves into a a very solid financial foundation to, to, you know, retire wealthy. Mm Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it's not just, it's not just a theory. It's not just a thought. Like these are actual findings from studies Mm -hmm. of people who have really done it and had Mm -hmm. success with it. So Mm -hmm. I love that. And I love that encouragement because like this, this can be done, you know, it's how you manage your money. It's how you approach your money. It's how you attack this process that really Mm -hmm. is going to set you up for success. Mm -hmm. Um, So one thing that we did soon after we um, both became teachers is that we hired a um, a financial planner. So we met with somebody and they really have helped us to invest in certain ways that we never would have known how to otherwise. And I can tell you now, Jeff is a go-getter when it, like I said, he's the geek and he really geeks out over, um, over financial, like investing in our future. And he's done some research and, you know, schools do invest in your pension, you know, in your teacher retirement fund, the TRF and all of that. But there are different ways to, you can manage your own money and where that, those retirement funds are going. Is there anything that you can offer as far as some advice on that? Or should I just tell teachers you need to educate yourself or find somebody that's well-educated and how those funds are being allocated because it can make, you can miss out on a lot of money. Um, if you are not well-versed and if you don't, you know, kind of step in and say, Hey, tell me about moving this money here or 
going into a more aggressive or less aggressive, you know, fund. Do you have any, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, we have smart investor pros here at Ramsey, which are trusted financial advisors that we've vetted, that we know do well and serve our, serve our tribe very well. Um, so we always encourage people to connect with a professional who knows what they're doing, like you said, mm-hmm. that can show you those spots to invest and how to do it wisely. So um, if you go to RamseySolutions.com, you can search for Smart Vester Pros. Me and my husband, we use a Smart Vester Pro perfect, or personally, you know, even though we know a lot about money, I love looking at money, you know, this is what I do for a living. Mm-hmm. I still use the Smart Vester Pro because they're like next level. I learn things myself and they're like constantly watching the markets and they know what to do. So I do yes. encourage you to connect with somebody who can, you know, really guide you and they specialize in that area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. All right, Christina, tell us a little bit lastly about borrowed future. What is this all about? Yes. Oh, borrowed future. It's our first full length documentary and it uncovers the dark side of the student loan industry. And it really exposes how the system it's built to work against you, but it also shows that you have the power to beat the system and that you don't have to go into student loan debt. So Mm -hmm. I'm super excited about this project because I've so often have had parents or teachers come to me and say, you know, how do I get that light bulb moment to go off in students' brains that go, you know, you don't have to go into debt. You don't have to go this way for school. And I just feel like this documentary is the perfect resource to give a student to have them watch it and they can go, oh my gosh, like, I don't want to go into debt. In this documentary, it shows, it shows the system and it also shows stories of people who went into debt and the pain that it's caused them, as well as success stories of people who avoided debt. So Mm -hmm. it's just really eye-opening and very powerful and a great tool to just really help people change their perspective. So teachers can actually watch it for free at borrowedfuture.com. Yes. And I actually, I watched the trailer and I did register for the free viewing as a teacher and it was very, very easy. And I can tell you the trailer is so, so compelling because I, I'm a mom of a college student. And because we follow these baby steps, we have saved for her college funding, but not all of it. So that was part of the deal. We told her we will save as much as we can through a 529, uh, but we were not going to be able to pay for all of her college. But we have really tried to educate her on, you know, student loans are not free money. You, you will have to pay them back. So the less that you borrow, the better. So she's got a job and all of that good stuff. But it is, it is really disappointing to, to watch this and to see how, how the system really is, is set up for you to fail and to just, it, it, it can wreck your financial future. It really can. And, and that's the thing is like, we're talking to adults all the time that are on the other side of it that mm-hmm. just wish they would have known sooner. So we're trying to kind of attack it from both ways, helping mm-hmm. people get out of debt, set themselves up for financial freedom, but really also stopping the problem before it even begins. Like if mm-hmm. we can educate students on money and how to do well with money, then we really, you know, avoid some of the challenges of going through baby step two and having to pay off debt. We want them to avoid that completely and Mm -hmm. start building financial freedom from the beginning. And that's really Mm -hmm. the goal of exposing this industry. We really want to like cause the holy ruckus and get people to open their eyes so that they can really win, win powerfully in the long run. Absolutely. And what better way to win than to educate yourself in, in all ways that you possibly can. Christina, is there anything else that you'd like to share with the listeners of the Burn and Teacher podcast today? I just encourage y'all um, to just continue pressing in and taking control of your finances. I love that this is a field that has so many millionaires that have mm-hmm. so many people who've had massive, massive success. And that's just really exciting to me. I am so grateful for you having me and just wish you all well. Oh, thank you so much. We, we are always glad to hear anybody on here who can help us to take even baby steps forward because action breeds action. And even the tiniest of steps can, can really move you forward in the direction that you need to go in order to not just overcome burnout, but to live your best life. We only get one of them. And financially, you know, we, we do have a lot more control than what we sometimes think that we do. And your advice today was really, really helpful. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And we will have all of the links that Christina talked about today in the show notes. And again, thank you, Christina. And to all you teachers out there, 
Until next time, take a deep breath because you just took another step to becoming a burned in teacher. Burn on. If you enjoyed today's podcast episode, you can head over to burnedinteacher.com where you can access the entire vault of Burned In Teacher podcast episodes and more information about ways I want to help you go from burned out teacher to burned in human. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would be so grateful if you would head over to iTunes and leave a review and a rating about the Burned In Teacher podcast. Until next time, take a deep breath because you just took another step to becoming a burned in teacher. Burn on.